This is a Fillmore high flow and no clog Presto replacement valve. And this is Silka's ultimate tubeless sealant. Now, before we go any further, in fairness to our contestants, this is not what you want to have happen. However, my experience since trying out the Silka sealant is that their foaming action is real. If you let out a little bit of pressure after spinning or moving the tire, you may get this kind of surprise. Maybe that's just too much sealant. Well, maybe. I am still running the Vittoria airliner inserts. So do I need less sealant because the inserts take up space? Or do I need more sealant because there's more surface area to coat? Either way, for 40 to 43 mil tires, I've been running about 40 to 60 milliliters of sealant and been going through the course pretty quickly as they've been getting gummed up. Here's the Victoria multi-way valve I've been using. You can see the multi-way portion of the base of the valve is handling the sealant pretty decently. There's some buildup for sure, but plenty of room in multiple directions for air to flow. If you listen close here, you can hear that the valve isn't naturally closing off, so it continues to leak slowly even without holding it open. Looking at the valve core itself, the stem is very gummy in its movement and feel. I'm not sure how well this translates to video, but it's on its way to failure. Removing the core, we get a great demonstration of exactly what's gumming up the movement. Hard to tell, but the buildup appears to all be at the base. The core probably pulled out whatever was in there. If we keep going, we find a little bit more buildup inside of the core itself. Enter the star of our show, the Fillmore Valve. I've ignored these until now because, one, they're $50 for valves. Two, I've never had a clogging issue before, and three, I never used valve caps and didn't like the idea of having to deal with the cap every time I pump. Technically, the caps aren't required, but given the design, it seems wise to use the caps to lock them shut. Anyway, as I started clogging my traditional valves, I decided it was time to try out the Fillmore's. Inside, you can see a pin running side to side that holds the poppet valve in place. It can slide left to right along this pin, but you can't remove it. You can see how the pressure from pumping forces the valve open. With back pressure from inside the tire, it would auto-close. These are listed as 50 millimeter valves, and the packaging says they are for 18 to 28 millimeter deep rims. I'll show a few measurements for anyone trying to decide what size they'd want to order. The test later will show them mounted in my deeper carbon rims. They are 30 millimeter deep rim and just barely leave enough for the pump to grab onto. Inside the wheel, the poppet sticks out quite a bit more than a traditional valve. I may cut a bit of a relief into my tire insert since I don't want the insert pushed into the tire more than normal. The retaining nut is all metal. For my carbon rims, I prefer to run the kind with a rubber o-ring against the carbon. Since the outside dimensions are all identical to a normal Presto valve, swapping isn't a problem. If you lose a cap or just need something that isn't black, you can purchase these cap kits, but at 10 bucks, it seems a bit expensive. The other star of our show today is the Silka Sealant. I've only been using this for a few months, so I can't really offer a long-term review yet. I was tired of dealing with the thready leftovers from dried out stands race day and thought I'd give this a try. I figured the fiber foam claims were just typical marketing hyperbole, but I've come to believe this is a significant change and in theory, it seems like it should make a difference. Okay, so I swapped the Fillmore in and topped off the sealant to the level I typically install at. Remember, with the Silka sealant, you always pour in the tire or it will clog up your injector in the valve. I'd also recommend the pour-in method if you're using tire inserts, since it'll distribute the sealant a little more evenly. After inflating, spinning, and bouncing the wheel a bit, here's what happened. I pumped it back up to 40 PSI and tried again. I'd say I managed to replicate what had happened before, but the internet wants drama. So, I cracked it open and added a lot more sealant. You know, for science. Without doubt, this is overfilled with sealant. I 
Before we get to the valve, let's talk about the sealant a bit. I let the wheel sit for several hours with the valve at 12 o'clock. And without moving it, I let a little pressure out. A small amount of sealant came through. So I shook it up and tried again. Bingo, sealant spraying. So this foaming action seems to be real. I never saw this happen with stands. Whatever is happening does seem to get the sealant well distributed. After sitting for 24 hours, I couldn't feel any gumminess, so I pulled the valve to inspect. See these black thready things? They are the carbon fiber bits that are in the sealant. You can see a little film forming around the poppet opening, but not really anything forming inside to create a blockage. Up at the top of the valve, not really anything showing. It may take more cycles of spray and drying to know for sure. Aside from the O-ring on the poppet and the red seal for the rim, the valves are all metal, so cleaning should be a breeze. A little citrus degreaser and some isopropyl alcohol, and they look good as new. I'd hope to get through the center of the core with a pipe cleaner or something, but the opening just isn't wide enough. Hopefully that won't be necessary. If you've been debating about using Fillmore valves, I hope something here was helpful for you. And with that done, why not check out this video about using Victoria Airliner tire inserts?